Hello friends. Now today we are going to see the law of gearing for a gear pair. In this, basically we will see its statement and we will see the line diagram for a gear pair. So here, basically this law of gearing it is nothing but it is the condition for the constant velocity ratio for a gear pair, in which the velocity for each and every gear it is same. And the statement is the common normal drawn at the point of contact between a pair of teeth. It must always pass through the pitch point, and this also statement called as the condition for the correct gearing. So now this is a gear pair in which this is the gear two and this is the gear one. So O two and O one these are the respective centers of the gear first and second, and here second and first gear they are having respective angular velocity as omega one and omega two. And when we are saying a gear pair is in contact with respect to each other, when their pitch circles they are meeting at one common point, that point is called as the pitch point. So this is the pitch circle for gear second, and this is the pitch circle for gear first. So they are meeting at points. So this point is called as the pitch point. And as per our statement, that whatever the common normal, now this is the Q point here. If you see, this is the Q point where it is the both the gear pair they are making contact. So we have drawn one common normal which is passing through this point of contact, and then we have drawn one tangent at that point of contact. Okay. So what is law of gearing states that the common normal which is drawn at the point of contact it must always pass through this pitch point. So then and then only our condition for the correct gearing is formed. So now here if you see, so V one here this is the velocity vector. As you know, velocity vector it is the vector quantity. Which is having the direction as well as magnitude. So this velocity v1 of gear one is perpendicular to this sector at this point, and v2 and here particular v2 is the velocity vector which is perpendicular to this point at this uh, point of contact. So as per this statement, these two velocities should be is whatever the ratio of these two velocities should be constant. So when this ratio they are coming constant, then and then only we can say that you are Gear pair it is formed properly, or it is uh, satisfying the condition for the correct gear. Okay. Now in next slide we will see the animation in detail. So far we have seen that we can take two involutes, or we can take a hypocycloid and an AP cycloid, and engage them to form gears. Which give us a constant velocity ratio and a positive engagement. Now we are going to see that are we stuck with just involutes or hypo and epicycloidal pairs, or do we have the freedom to get more such profiles? For that, we must understand why these profiles, like involutes or hypo and epicycloids, work. So, what is the governing law? That law is called the law of gearing. And we are going to derive it here. So let us start with two rigid bodies shown in green and blue here. Both are pivoted, so they can rotate about this point O1 and point O2 respectively. Now the green body is rotating with angular velocity omega 1, and because it is making a contact with this blue body at C, it pushes it and makes it rotate at angular velocity omega 2. If these were nice gears, then the ratio omega 1 to omega 2 would remain constant and we are going to find the condition which would make it so. For that, we will consider this point C as a double point, a point which is situated on the green body and another coincident point situated on the blue body. The point C on the green body will have its velocity directed perpendicular to this line O1C. Similarly, point C on the blue body will have its velocity directed perpendicular to line CO2. Now, these two velocities will have a certain relationship. To know that, let us draw a common normal at point C. So, this line is normal to the green profile as well as the blue profile at point C. Now, point C on the green body and its counterpart on the blue must have identical velocity components along this common normal. Otherwise, the two bodies might lose contact, which we don't want, or they will run into each other, which will not happen because these are rigid bodies. 
So the velocities of these two points, if projected on the common normal, would have identical component. Now let us consider two more points. By dropping perpendiculars from the center on the common normal, these two points we have named as M and N. Now we know that two points in the rigid body must have identical velocity components along the line that joins them. Otherwise, the two points would come closer or fly apart, which cannot happen in the rigid body. So if M is a part of this green body and N is a part of this blue body, then M and C would have identical velocity components along this line, which is the common norm. Similarly, N and C would have identical velocity components along that line. So in effect, points N and M would have identical velocity components along the common normal. But because the way we located them along the perpendicular from the centers, their entire velocity would be along this line. So we can say the velocity of M and velocity of N are both directed along the common normal and are identical. Since both these bodies are in rotation, we can write the velocity of m and n as r into omega. So velocity of m is O1m into omega 1, which should be equal to velocity of n, which is O2n into omega 2. So the ratio of omega 1 to omega 2 must be equal to O2n upon O1m. But these two distances are rather awkward in their geometric description. So let us get something simpler by joining the two centers. This line intersects the common normal at point P and it forms two triangles. O1 MP and O2 NP both are right angles and have one angle equal. So they are similar. So whatever is the ratio of these two distances will be the ratio of their hypotenuses as well. And therefore, we get a simpler rule. The ratio of angular velocities is equal to the ratio in which the line joining their centers is divided by the common normal. This statement is called the law of gearing. Finally, since we want the velocity ratio to remain constant, the ratio of these two distances must be fixed, thereby fixing the location of P on the line joining the centers. So law of gearing says the common normal must intersect the line joining the centers in a fixed point. That point is called as the pitch point. Thank you.